Since 2003, this is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench, and by Junk Be Gone, and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning, and welcome into the Junk Be Gone studios for today's edition of the Sports Source. Does it feel like you're now smack dab in the middle of a bigger, better SEC? Because you are. Well, it's bigger at least. Texas and Oklahoma are now in the league. Whether it's better, well, we'll discuss that today. How can it be better for fans? Uh, what are the biggest rivalries in the SEC now? You brought in Texas, Oklahoma. You brought in Texas, Texas A&M from a national perspective. Have those passed some of the SEC's best rivalries of all time? What's it all mean for Tennessee? That's the focus of our show today. We're going to talk about the expanded SEC, what it means for rivalries and for Tennessee. First segment of our program, I already mentioned them once, they bring you this studio every week. It's junk be gone. Summer is here, obviously, it's a million degrees out this week. There's no better time to clear the junk from your attic, your garage, your shed, your backyard, your front yard, or maybe your business. That's right, if you've got a business, they clear stuff out of there too. Junk be gone will haul it all away, all the old clutter that you want gone from your home or office. Give them a call or visit them at junkbegone.biz, good local company. But check them out today, preferably after the show, but at some point today, junkbegone.biz. All right, let's welcome in today's panel. We have right down here Jimmy Himes. We have Ryan Callahan right here, Tyler Ivins, and Bob Hodge right there. And you can read the little graphics under their, their names. They'll tell you exactly where these guys are because we've got to save time. We've got to get right into this. I don't have time to tell people where you're from. All right, let's take a look. You heard me mention it, the new... SEC, and there's a new pinwheel graphic, if you remember the old-fashioned pinwheel graphic, uh, when it was just 10 teams back in the day. Now, 16 teams, as you've wedged in the last few years, uh, Texas A&M and Missouri on, now you've got Texas and Oklahoma on that thing. A lot of schools, it's getting too many schools for the pinwheel graphic. And then if you look at it team by team here, the, the full Southeastern Conference, there you see it, and Texas and Oklahoma highlighted there as the new teams. But that is, a, that is a brave new world. When you talk about rivalries and relationships, I think one of the reasons that some schools, and we'll discuss this, some schools don't feel like they're really rivals, I don't know if it's necessarily the school as much as you just don't see teams as much. Mm -hmm. You might come to hate them if you saw them more. So we'll discuss all of that today, but I want to start talking about that. I've not talked to anyone, no one, in terms of fandom, who looks at this move and says, oh, I'm so happy. I mean, from a financial standpoint, we all know your local school is going to get more money from the SEC with bigger TV contracts, et cetera. That's great, but I don't know that the fans enjoy the money that's passing through Danny White's hands over there. Uh, that said, maybe there's a spinoff of that. What are the positives? Let's try and figure this out. Maybe there are 10 that I'm just not thinking of. Maybe there are none, but from a fan's perspective, what are the positives to adding Oklahoma and Texas? Anyone? I'll give you one that I think. Uh, a lot of times the Tennessee fan base, and it's not just a Tennessee fan base, but if Tennessee's playing a game in Norman, Oklahoma, or if they're going to Oregon or making a road trip, a lot of fans want to go to those road trips. I think a lot of fans in the SEC, not just Tennessee, but would like to go to Austin, Texas, and would like to go to Norman, Oklahoma. It's a new experience. I think you'll get pretty good attendance from the visiting teams. Now, that could wear off, but for the immediate future, I think that would be one of the positives. It would be a nice road trip for fans to go to a venue they haven't been to. Immediately a negative that I will go into with that, and I know it's one thing that everybody wants to talk about. We only have eight conference games right now. How often and long did it take for Tennessee to square off against Texas A&M whenever they first got brought in yeah. in 2012? Yeah. This is another one of those situations where you got to have a nine-game conference schedule because we did see Tennessee fans show up in Norman when they did the home-and-home. Austin is a beautiful town, as you've already pointed out. It's great from an SEC standpoint. How long until you actually see a Tennessee fan walk through the gates of Darrell K. Royal Stadium? It could be some time. But I'll give Jimmy credit for trying. <laughs> at least he tried and still got immediately shot down. But I agree on the Austin thing. I think Norman, once somebody goes, they're going to go, okay, this is cool. <laughs> Austin, Austin's a pretty fun city. It's got a great yeah. reputation. Mm -hmm. I think people, that's one that people may every year, well, you're not going to get them every year, but 
Every time you're in Texas, every I can years. see yeah, every eight years <laughs> you can you can see folks going down there. Well, Bob, it, oh, it, Ryan, go ahead. I was say uh, that's where I was going with it too. I think the road trip aspect. Norman's just outside Oklahoma City, so it's not a bad road trip as far as that's concerned. I mean, there are things to do there. Norman's an okay college town. It's 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 a fun oh, road trip. Okay college town, yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah. It's good. So, um, so I, I think that that is a positive of this, and I think that's what where most fans will start because they're looking for a little variety. Sometimes you get tired of playing the same twelve. 14 teams in the conference. So I think that's where that's where I would start for sure. I would also just say in the arms race, and you could argue, sure, the SEC started all this, so it's their fault. But if you're keeping up with the Big Ten, this at least strengthens the SEC's argument as the king of college football. Mm-hmm. Adding Oklahoma and Texas keeps you at the top of the mountain, mm-hmm. whereas if you, if you stood by and watched the Big Ten just add Oregon, USC, all these other teams, you might fall to second, t- second place in some people's minds. See, I will counter that you get tired of seeing the same teams because we haven't seen the same teams. Yeah. I don't think you, you didn't see Texas A&M enough. Mm. Auburn, I mean, it pops up every now and then, but I used to like seeing Auburn every year, yeah. and now you don't get to see it. I know that you've got, you know, Ole Miss. Miss. I, I don't think seeing the same teams in the conference is, is much of a problem. If I'm looking for a positive, and this is stretching one to the, about the point the rubber band breaks, I will typically, if, I, if I'm not at a Tennessee game, there's nothing going on, I'll watch Texas and Oklahoma, you know, mm-hmm. the Red River game. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll turn that one on. Okay, now it's an SEC game. You know, Texas and Texas A&M, a fun old rivalry from from decade ago, two decades ago, whatever. Okay, that one's now an SEC game. So that makes it a little more interesting because most fans, if you're a Tennessee fan, Typically, you have a rooting interest in other SEC games, especially when you're a pretty good football team, yeah. because I need this team to win, that team to lose. So that's a little interesting. But I'm talking from a TV perspective, and I'm talking about certain marquee games. As far as the overall big picture, I turn it back over to you. <laughs> I've, I, I, I've, yeah. got, I've got one, maybe, and that is uh, if you're good enough. You clearly, as you say, you've differentiated yourself. It used to be the Power Five. It's now the Power Two. Mm-hmm. The SEC and the Big Ten, they're going to get more bids into all of the playoffs. I think mm-hmm. they're going to get more bids in any conference in the playoffs, which down the road may mean that your school, Tennessee here, or if you're watching this on YouTube and you're sitting out in Oklahoma, maybe your school, Oklahoma, I think you're going to have more option, more opportunities to play for national championships because your league is going to get more bids. Boy, that is a stretch, though, because you have to be good enough to get one of those bids and then right. make something with those bids, and that's awfully businessy. And I don't know that fans <laughs> ever get interested in the businessy side of it, but maybe that's the only thing I could come up with was the fact that, okay, you're probably going to get more bids into national tournaments, the college football playoff, mm-hmm. and that may result in more ter- more championships for your team. And I can I can see that being a real possibility. But the key to what you all just said is, and you said it a couple of times, you got to be good. Yeah. I, I think if you're, say you're, it does Kentucky, nothing. Say you're Kentucky football. Yeah. Which okay, you're better than you've been historically, and that's great. Yeah. But you're not been at that level where you're competing for the postseason. So does it make it better for you, yeah. or does that okay? Now somebody else is tamping as farther back down. What's it do for Mississippi State? Yes. Yeah. I, I just Missouri. I just see overall as a league, if you're a fan, I just I just can't, it's hard to find the positives. Tyler, you got 20 seconds. Can you come up with a positive? Zero. I'm like a four year old kicking and screaming in the grocery store. I didn't want it to happen in 12 when I was covering other markets and other conferences. <laughs> I sure as heck don't want to see it happen in 24. But here we are. Yeah, here we are. All right. Uh, very good. When we come back, the four remaining power conferences have all taken on teams this summer. They're all looking for brands, brand names now. That's what you're after. Every line of extension, every time they expand, it changes what they're looking for. So my question is, we'll show you who's been added to each of the four main conferences. Who won this round? Let's discuss that next. We'll back in the sports. And welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. For more than 100 years, East Tennessee contractors, construction companies, and do-it-yourselfers have trusted and turned to A.G. Hines Company for their building materials and their tools. You can do the same. And when you do, you're going to get the right materials at the right price, and, boy, you're going to get it from good people. Visit them this week, A.G. Hines Company, 
They're not hard to find. It's right on Hind Street in downtown Knoxville. Okay, I mentioned as we went to break, take a look at this list. This will show you everybody that's been added to the major conferences this year. The Big Ten, or this summer I should say, the Big Ten is now an 18-team league. Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington have joined. The SEC, <laughs> they've only added two. 16 teams is where they moved to. The ACC, oh, good Lord. They've added California, <laughs> SMU, and Stanford. Perfect for the Atlantic Coast Conference. <laughs> 17, and 17 teams, plus you've got Notre Dame, who's sort of kind of a member yeah. when they want to be and not when they don't want to be. Then you got the Big 12, which added the four corner schools that they had been coveting. All big, big names, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, Utah. But you got to take into effect, into account, they lost Oklahoma and Texas. So that would be a net minus, I would think, net negative, I would think. Going to ask you guys, Tyler, I'll start with you. In terms of going for the big brand names, mm -hmm. who won this round of expansion? <clears throat> I'm sure Cal fans are really excited to jump a plane to Greensboro, North Carolina for the ACC tournament <laughs> whenever that happens. <laughs> Um, it depends on the sport. I love the question because you break it down by sport. Now, look, as a whole, SEC. Because you've got Texas, you got Oklahoma. You could put that on the mantle. That's something you can show off to all your friends. We got Texas. We got Oklahoma. As crazy as this sounds, though, if you told me, yeah, you've got to give me an answer, I'm going to say the Big 12. Here's the reason why. I will preface this by saying I'm college hoops guy. Well, yeah. You lose okay. Oklahoma and Texas. You didn't really lose a lot from your heavyweights of the Big 12 Conference. Yeah. You're adding Arizona with a conference that already has Baylor, Kansas, and some really good basketball to be played from the top to the bottom. And I haven't even brought up the chance they might flirt with Gonzaga down the line. But as of right this second, whole overall SEC. Sports specific, I'm not going to knock the, the Big 12 as much as, as you opened the segment up. Arizona, Utah, and football, Kyle Winningham. Not as bad, even though you did lose Oklahoma and Texas. They are, they are, you can make a good case, they are the number one basketball conference out there, which is yes. good, and I understand your argument. The problem is, basketball isn't football. Yeah, it's football not football, the money exactly. Is, so. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the Big Ten, and here's the reason. And if you're just saying, if it was just football, nothing else, okay, I'd lean a little bit to the SEC because Oklahoma and Texas are just – they're there every year, whether they are or right. not. I mean, yeah, Texas, people care has, about them. Texas has been playing for a national championship for the last 20 years. Maybe eventually they'll get there <laughs> a little, minds, little yeah. bit closer. So if you're just talking football, I would lean SEC. But if it is overall, I'm going to go the Big Ten. Because I think you've got maybe not better schools, but a little bit flashier schools. Maybe a little bit of the West Coast thing is coming with them. Because... I, I know out of those schools, I've always kind of liked UCLA. I've always and that's kind the of liked worst UCLA. of the four programs and it's the worst going of the four. Right now. I've always disliked Oregon because, it, to me, make up your mind on Saturday and wear the same thing two times in a row. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. USC, kind of like – so I'm going to go with Big Ten. Big Ten. Okay, where are you guys going? Who won? I, I lean Big Ten just a little bit just because – well, it depends on what, what, from what perspective mm -hmm. you're talking. Sure. From, the, right. from the AD's perspective, the business perspective, the Big Ten, I think, because they are now – the first, and for better or worse, we all hate it. We think it's stupid, but they're the first national conference. They now have West Coast, East Coast, and Midwest fans, and that makes them a national draw. And they love the fact that all those schools are in the AAU, yes. which is the big academic deal. Yep. They love that. That's why they've got 18 schools in that league. All 18 were AAU when they came in. Nebraska's fallen out, mm -hmm. but yep. th their people love that. But, so. the, but the average... Average punch per team that you added, yeah. it's the SEC by far because they added the two, the two heavyweights that, add, that make the conference stronger without adding four teams. Yeah. The, the Big Ten, I just think from a business perspective, they got the big TV deal because they're a national brand now. That's right. You could, they could stop right now. We keep looking at, well, is it going to be the SEC and the Big Ten form the AFC and the NFC? Well, they're already there. Yep. They go from New York City to L.A. Mm -hmm. So they're there. You would still have to – add if you wanted to become a national conference like mm -hmm. that. Jimmy, who won? I'm going SEC, and I don't think it's a positive that the Big Ten is coast to coast. I think it's a negative because I'm looking not just at football and basketball. I'm looking at a softball team Volleyball. going from Southern Cal to Rutgers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's so many dud games or so many dud matchups that and I think you will see. And that yeah, and on a regular making, basis. Yeah, yeah, so I don't see that happening. With the SEC, Texas comes in. They've won 66 national championships. Now, that can be skewed because sometimes 
Dunkel Index gave you a national championship, yeah. right? Some of those, I get that. And Oklahoma uh, comes in with 44. That's 110 national championships by two schools. They typically are good in all sports. So I'm going to go the SEC with Texas and Oklahoma, which spans only two time zones. Just to add to you in the Big Ten, it's with what you guys brought up, two time zones. Uh, still talking to people from the seven years I spent covering the conference quickly, they just simply said they like these additions for this reason. They were really top-heavy with Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State. Mm -hmm. They didn't really do a lot right. with the Maryland Rutgers standpoint. Wisconsin's taking a dip. Iowa, Nebraska hasn't lived up to expectations. Yeah. By adding these four, now you can start getting a little bit more fluctuation from top to I, bottom. I'm glad you mentioned that. I meant to go down that road, too, because that – they actually can get four or five teams in the playoffs somewhere right. now. They yeah. couldn't before. That That's wasn't right. a, a yeah. real possibility. Yeah, it was not a deep conference. And because their last round of expansion that you just mentioned, that was back when everybody was just trying to get new cable households. Yeah. Now Baltimore, it's the big New York. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, I would go SEC here very quickly. Uh, I went and did some, some math. I went and looked at the top television games from the last three years and which programs had the most eyeballs. Now, this is football, mm -hmm. so we could look at basketball or whatever, but football's king, so I looked at football. Texas and Oklahoma are both in the top ten in terms of eyeballs over the last three years, and Oklahoma hasn't been great that whole time. They had a bad year in there. Mm -hmm. Whereas all four of those Big Ten teams are outside the top ten. Now, they're all inside the top 25, so that counts for something, but in terms of name power, eyeballs tune in, Oklahoma and Texas have that. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? Very quickly. I was just going to say – the fans of of this, of the leagues, of all of it, do they look past football, basketball, men's and women's, softball, baseball? Do they look past that, or is it just, okay, these are the sports I care about, everything else, it just doesn't matter. And so to Jimmy's point, which I think was a very good point about these other matchups, do, do people look that deep into it? Or is it no. just, I like the football matchups, I like the basketball matchups, and outside no. of that, eh, really doesn't matter. There's, there's a pecking yeah. order. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, when we come back, now that Texas and Oklahoma have arrived, what's the biggest SEC rivalry from a national perspective? I've got a list of 10. Maybe I forgot something. These guys can point it out. But I want to know what the number one rivalry is in this conference. Come on back on the Sports Force. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. If you're looking for a place to cool down from the blistering summer heat, head to the Smoky Mountains and your own cabin. Mountain streams, cool breezes, shade trees, beautiful views. Plus, whenever you head into downtown Gatlinburg, if you stay with Parkside Cabin Rentals, you're going to get free parking in Gatlinburg. That's why you should be checking out ParksideCabinRentals.com as soon as the show ends today. Parkside Cabin Rentals. You'll be impressed when you go to their website and look at all the blueprints and layouts they have for their cabins. All right, take a look here. This was my list. I tried to come up with the 10 biggest rivalries in the SEC uh, from a national perspective. You could throw in some others here, like we were talking LSU, Texas A&M, maybe. Uh, what, LSU, Auburn, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, but you see the list here, Alabama, Auburn, Alabama, LSU, Alabama, Tennessee, Auburn, Georgia, Florida, Georgia, Florida, LSU, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas versus Texas A&M. Some people would say Tennessee, Georgia, but I think if you had to compare that to Tennessee, Florida, it's Tennessee, Florida on a national perspective. People got mm -hmm. used to seeing that mm -hmm. in the 90s to start their, their football season every year, the, the, uh, the real meat of the schedule. My question here is, what's the best rivalry on that list, Jimmy? From a national perspective, what's number one? And is it something that has been number one before, or is it something new? that we've just added with Texas and Oklahoma? I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, um, I'm torn between two of them. And, and one is, <clears throat> one of them is Texas and Oklahoma. I think that is a humongous rivalry. It's played in Dallas at the, the fairground area. But the other one to me would be Alabama and Auburn, the Iron Bowl. Uh, even as, as um, incompetent as Auburn has been in some recent years, didn't Alabama have to complete a fourth and 31 pass to beat them? I mean, even, even when Auburn's not that good, at least it's, usually it's a good game. The kick six game from what, I don't know, yeah. 10 years ago, yeah. whatever it was. I, I think that one is, that would probably be number one on my list. Go ahead, gentlemen. It's, a, go ahead. It's the number two overall rivalry, number one on your list when it comes to college football. It's Alabama and Auburn. Texas and Number Oklahoma, two to Ohio State, Michigan. Number one, in my now? opinion, number one's Ohio State, Michigan. Yeah. Number three would be Army, Navy. I think Ohio State, I think Oklahoma, Texas is the top five rivalry of all time. Maybe because I'm SEC guy, will always be SEC guy. But when I watch Oklahoma and Texas go toe to toe, I get the 
I understand just like the difficulties of so many different conference showdowns, usually those are the two that usually represent their conference every yeah. year. I need to be ingrained to watch it more before I start giving it the promotion that many do. I'm going to go ahead and let it carry its motion with it. I agree with Jimmy. I think Alabama-Auburn is still number one despite Auburn up and down, mm. sideways, whatever they've been on probation yearly. Um, <laughs> but I think Texas and Oklahoma on a national perspective will catch up fairly quickly because of Auburn being up and down and sideways recently. I think that game lost a little bit of luster at times because Alabama was so dominant. So I think Oklahoma and Texas, but will people realize that's an SEC showdown? <laughs> How long will it take before I'm going to watch the big SEC game this week? Yeah, Texas Oklahoma. and Oklahoma. You, you'll have more SEC eyeballs on it yeah. Yeah. just because of what it means. Now. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Uh, it, It's Alabama-Auburn for me. I, I do think Oklahoma-Texas is, is where I'd go number two, but uh, I – I think that one, I actually think that one might lose a little bit of luster because I think Oklahoma is going to be damaged by the move to the SEC. I think they're going to become a second-tier program mm -hmm. in the SEC instead of a national contender. So I think Alabama-Auburn, just everybody sees and feels the hatred watching that game. Well, that makes it a one rivalry. I pull, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I give you guys the questions, then I have the answers. Uh, <laughs> I went and pulled the, I pulled the TV eyeballs hmm. over the last few years. Iron Bowl by far. Hmm. Iron Bowl by far. More than Texas-Oklahoma. It's... I think you nailed it. It's Ohio State, Michigan is on a different planet when you look at the ratings. Then it's Alabama, Auburn, and then it's kind of everybody else. And the reason why I had those three in that reason, and, and look, Army, Navy, it never comes down to this. What do those other two games have in common where they play them on the schedule? Ohio State, Michigan, right. who's going to win the division? Auburn, Alabama, who's going to win the division? Yeah. There's more on the line. Oklahoma and Texas, you kind of already know who has the early lead, much like a Tennessee, Florida, but it doesn't know this winner ultimately decides the division. Let me ask you this. Let me give you a quick little follow-up on that. All right, so we got Alabama. Most of us have Alabama, Auburn, number one. We all agree that Texas, Oklahoma is now your number two. Is your number three now Texas, Texas A&M? From a national perspective, I would say it is. Mm -hmm. I would think it's going to be probably this year because it's going to be the first time they've played in, in over a decade. And I think if both teams are good, it can catch up. I think it, it, a lot That's, of this fluctuates. I think Tennessee and Florida used to be much higher on that mm -hmm. list mm -hmm. until they both kind of fell back. But Texas and Texas A&M have had the eyeballs They've even had when it, they yes, were good, they have. whereas Florida and Tennessee can take a dip. I, no. I'm going Texas, Texas A&M. Uh, but – the ex-girlfriend married back into the family. Yeah. They, they, they I, left to get away from Texas. Have you seen the ticket prices for this year's game? Yeah. Texas, we Texas, Texas talked about radio, yeah. More than 10 years <laughs> apart, it's going to make this an even yeah. fiercer and, rivalry. And they, the thing, yeah. We talked about this on the radio. You brought it up on the radio. That was a Thanksgiving night game, or you brought up a yeah. Brian Rice. Did that, it. that was the ideal spot. Yeah, it was a, th it was a Thanksgiving mm -hmm. night game. Everybody yeah. tuned in to watch it. I just think it, it was very much like an Iron Bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. so I don't know that it's – I think it's probably less dependent on the teams being good than Texas, Oklahoma is. Yeah. Because it's that in state hate. Anyway, I think it's interesting. You can make a good case that of the SEC rivalries on the board, two of the three are now because Texas and Oklahoma came into the league. Remember, whenever Top they three. left, they went back to see who was the last time they played home and home, Texas and Texas AM. Texas called AM up and said, Hey, why don't we start first this year when we match up again? AM said, No, we'll go back in the record books. Yeah. Last time we played, we went to Austin. Your butt's coming to College yeah, Station. Yeah, yeah. That's how far that rivalry stretches. All right, very good. When we come back, of the 15 schools in the SEC, which really feel like rivals to Tennessee? Tennessee just played Texas A&M for a national championship. It didn't feel like a conference game to me, and no one I've talked to thought it felt like a conference game. There are some teams in the original 10-team SEC that I don't think felt like a rivalry to Tennessee. Let's see what this group thinks about who the real rivalries are for Tennessee. Come on back. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Everyone loves spending time on their deck, their patio, their backyard in the summer. Unless you're being annoyed by mosquitoes, ants, and those giant carpenter bees bouncing off your head like tennis balls. Southeast Termite and Pest Control can treat your deck, treat your yard, treat your patio. Don't let the bugs drive you away. Don't let them drive you back inside. That's your, you paid good money for that yard. Have Southeast Termite and Pest Control come in and clear it out. Get rid of the skeeters, get rid of the ants, get rid of the carpenter bees. SoutheastTermite.com, great, great local company. All right, Tennessee played Texas A&M, as I just said, about a week ago for a national title, and it didn't feel like a conference game, even though Texas A&M has been in the league for 12 years now. 
So I think a lot of these rivalries are based not so much, well, this team doesn't fit or that team doesn't fit. It's the fact you don't see them that often because you're a 16-team league or a 14-team league, whatever it's been. You know what I'm getting at. So I want to ask you very quickly. You tell me. I'm going to run through the other 15 schools. I want to know yeah. the ones that you think feel like a rivalry to Tennessee. And for this exercise, let's say in football. Okay? Mm -hmm. We'll just keep it to football. Alabama's a yes. Yes. Okay. Arkansas? No. No. Auburn? Yes. No. This is going to depend no. on yes. age. Generational yes. It does to me. Yes. No, no but I think they haven't played enough. No, I think that's, that's the problem. Well, they, they used to play played. every year. If, I know. Yeah, it was, it's been 30 years, though. Yeah, for people who don't remember right. that, when I was a kid, the people who grew up with Tennessee, Florida mm -hmm. being the, the kickoff to your SEC season, yeah. I, it was Auburn that was the I, kickoff. I, I yeah. wish it was more of a rivalry because I think those programs have a lot in common, but it just hasn't been Well, if they start playing again, it would be a rivalry. Okay. Florida. Yes. Florida, is he yes? Oh, yes. Yeah. Florida, yes. Definitely. With a bullet. Okay. But if you didn't play, it wasn't before you added him and started yeah. playing. Right. right. That did, it's the opposite third, of what happened with Auburn. Yes. yes. They, yes. they switched places. Yeah. Absolutely. Georgia? Yes. Yes, but this one's fringe to me. Like, yeah, it still doesn't feel like it's a rivalry, reason. but it's yeah, just but been I a mean, weird. It, to me, it is a rivalry. Grown men who it bark is, at yeah, children. It's, it's yes, kind of like playing a friendly. I mean, I don't think people don't have the distaste for Georgia. I think the problem is you haven't had those two teams up and really good at the same time very right. often. Whereas Tennessee, Florida yeah. came in the league. That they, they got paired together in the East, and they were the top teams in the SEC. I yeah. know a radio host that has a distaste for Georgia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not a very good crowd down there. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky? <sighs> Are you kidding this me? Bring back the, the barrel. I Bring think back so. the barrel. It's a border rival. You've played yeah. them more than anybody else in the yeah. SEC. Bring no, back I, the barrel. I, I go okay. yes on this one, but I I have a hard time with this one and Vandy because you can only have, I mean, can you really have five? Right, you're right. You can, only, you can only have one <laughs> no. of Kentucky Vandy, and that's why I'm going Kentucky. I, I would lean Kentucky, oh, too. Yeah. I'm born and oh, raised Vandy. in this city. That rivalry was simply about donating blood, and my parents were in that split T-shirt, blue yeah. and orange. Kentucky's a rival. I think so, too. You don't... You don't Enjoy the Kentucky football game. Not really, no. It's been better in recent years. Um, LSU. No. no. Doesn't feel like it to me. I haven't played on no. them. Don't play they don't yeah. play them enough. Mississippi State. No. no. Nope. Missouri. No. You've played no. them every year. No. Stand on business. And, it's been, and that it's thing's been, been an important a good game. series. Yeah. yeah. It's been a very evenly matched series, too. They've beaten you and you've whipped them. And evenly no. matched, but one sided games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oklahoma, no. You haven't played them. Ole Miss. Should be, but isn't. Nope. But was. Yeah. RC see, spot on. See, was. Ole Miss would, would jump up there before Kentucky with me. But that's just because, well, I just grew up with them playing Ole Miss. Well, you grew up with them playing Kentucky, too. Just to play in Memphis, you know? But yeah. I remember Ole Miss being a little bit more competitive yeah. than yeah. Kentucky did. Uh, was. South Carolina. Now no, it no. is climbing the charts, in my opinion. It's another one like Missouri where there have been some important games and some good ones. We said, we said that Florida and Auburn switch places. Yeah. Ole Miss and South Carolina kind of switch places. Yeah. Ole Miss, to me, was not bigger than Kentucky, but it was up there. You know, it was a rival. Mm -hmm. South Carolina is becoming a rival of late, but yeah. it's still not on the top of my it, list. It's, I, do we I, put it on there now? I Only say like no I because not. you strictly said football. Yeah. Yeah, but if you said recent. all athletic departments, women's basketball, baseball, okay. all that, no. So I'd say no, but it's climbing. I think it's also too recent. You, you've yeah. got heat it's for these last. Yeah. Is it going to last? Yeah. All right, uh, Texas, not yet. Texas A&M, not yet. No. Nope. Vanderbilt. Come on. No. no. I don't think that, that doesn't feel like a robbery. Man. No. That Bob? No. It doesn't just because Vanderbilt's They come terrible. under the heading of the Kentucky rule. All right, so here's the deal. It is a, is a there are 15 teams, 16 team league. There are 15 other teams other than Tennessee, and we think four of them feel like a rivalry. <laughs> that's, yeah. Some so we've got, you can't see schools. it there, but uh, it's Alabama, Florida. There you go. Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky. That's what we got. But that's good for yeah. some schools. Some schools only have one or two. You know, it's just yeah. it, and everybody's Auburn different. should be on that list. It, <laughs> <laughs> and some of those rivals feel forced, too, and they get right. one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And the other thing is, you know, it's funny to listen to people talk about schedules and who ought to be there. And mm -hmm. the, nobody ever takes into account other people's feelings. Yeah. I always get, you know, because we deal with Tennessee fans, I always hear, yeah. mm -hmm. well, make those two play each other. It's like. Those two don't have any history. It's like, nah, I don't care. And it's like, well, nobody, nobody cares about, uh, it's like Mississippi State, Alabama, who cares? Mm -hmm. Those are the two closest schools in the conference. They've yeah. played a billion times. Yeah. They care. So I know you don't care, but they care. Like, if you don't give Kentucky, Tennessee as a permanent rival, who are they playing every year? Vanderbilt. Yeah. 
But yeah, mm-hmm. I, to me, so, yeah. we'll get into this a little later. Yeah. Kentucky's a rival in two sports. Yep. And I don't yeah. know that any of those other schools Completely are. Agree. All right. Uh, when we come back, in 1992, Tennessee started playing Florida and Georgia every year, and those turned into rivalries. They were playing Arkansas, and they played Missouri every year. Those two didn't turn into rivalries. If you take the three new Far West teams, A&M, who's been here for a while, Oklahoma, and Texas, and you, which one of those, if Tennessee got them every year, is most likely to become a rival? Would any of them? We'll discuss going back. Welcome back to the Sports Source, the segment brought to you by Madisonville Marine. Still some great months of boating ahead of us, so if you find yourself wishing you were out on an East Tennessee lake, then you need to get to Madisonville Marine Highway 411 North down there in Madisonville. There's no better place to buy a boat because they've got new boats, pre-owned boats, and great deals on every boat you can imagine. Plus, customer service is fantastic. Isn't that right, Bob Hodge? Yes, it is. You take your boat down there for any kind of issue, man, they get it running like it's brand new. Madmarine.com or Highway 411 North in Madisonville. All right, we just talked about Tennessee adding Florida and Georgia's annual rivals back in 92. Those rivalries took off. They also added Arkansas and South Carolina as yearly rivals back then. Those did not take off. You added Missouri in 2012 was an annual rivalry. It's been a good series. It still doesn't feel like a rivalry. So it kind of, it's an interesting deal. Which of these take off? You've got to see somebody all the time, and then there's got to be, both teams have to be good, or the other team has to steal something from you like South Carolina upsetting you a couple years ago, and then suddenly they're feeling like a rival. Bob, I'll start with you on this one. If Tennessee were to add Oklahoma or Texas or Texas A&M on an annual basis, which of those three, if any, is most likely to become a real rival with Tennessee? I think out of those three, it's Texas up here and the other two kind of, okay, let's see what would happen with it. But I think Texas... I mean, your states have history. Mm. They're connected yeah. with each other, you know, back yeah. going back almost 200 years. Yeah. You've got the, the real UT thing yeah. going. You wear orange, they wear some kind of crap that they call orange. <laughs> Burn orange. You know, so. Crap orange. Uh, I think they both have cool orange because nobody else wears their stuff. So, so I think all of that. Texas orange, wisely keeps it to their burnt orange. I haven't seen them wear black yet, but go ahead. Well. Or smoky gray. Okay, or smoky gray. There's a, there's or a pink or chartreuse. Texas. But uh, but I would say it would be Texas. I think Texas a rivalry with them a rivalry with them could could start pretty quickly. I don't think they, it'd take a long time. They're arrogant, like Notre Dame. They think they're the biggest school in the country. Well, they are the biggest school. But they think they're the biggest best school in the country. I think that would be the immediate rivalry. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. those two schools would hate each we'll, other. We'll see that. They will look down their nose at you, and you will. Flip them off their double horns. Yeah. <laughs> but does Texas have a forgotten son that might be the head coach of that said program now that would drive a coach away for more than a decade where he wouldn't go back home? It's Oklahoma. And it's because of if you have Josh Heupel and you have a protagonist okay. and the storylines that build into it, I, that's why I personally believe I think Josh Heupel makes sure he does everything personal to drag Kentucky for some reason through the dirt every year because of a family tie. I can't speak for Josh Heupel. I don't know this personally. I think Josh Heupel will do whatever it takes at any given moment to make sure Oklahoma has the worst day every time they get together. I could be okay. wrong, wow. but I think that's somebody might co-sign with me on the for a, for a guy that's worried about him going back to, I was about to, to Oklahoma, say, you need to hang right out with Tyler until Moore. they yeah. hire him. Um, I, which would be the quickest rival with Tennessee or any of them? I think it would be Texas, but I'll say that I'll, I'll say that's true of almost everyone in the conference because again, yes. Texas is going to annoy everybody. I think Texas. We've yeah. talked about it before. They blow up every conference yeah, they blow, they've been yeah. in. Their, yeah. their, their fan base is going to drive everyone nuts. And if they played Tennessee every year, uh, Texas looks like they're going to be pretty good. They'll probably cost Tennessee something if you play them enough in the next mm-hmm. five years. So I think Texas would be the answer, but they'd be the answer for probably 14 of the 16 teams in the conference. Texas is the antagonist. Yeah. If yeah. you're looking for yeah. one, it's Texas. And I would, and I would talk football, but I would take that to several other sports too. Yeah, Men's basketball, baseball. Because you got the I, Barnes I, factor there right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's Texas. I, I think Bob listed a lot of the right reasons. It's, it may be silly, but whose color mm-hmm. of orange is the real yep. orange? The who's the real UT? Mm-hmm. I mean, here's the thing. The problem mm-hmm. is people around the country consider Texas the real UT. Yep. When I've done radio or something mm-hmm. other places, and I'll mention UT, and they're like, "Well, are you covering Texas? We had you had to talk Tennessee." Get that every time I say UT. Yeah. So when I used to do CSS down in Atlanta, you would hear, uh, UT, you covering Texas? 
I think people will get tired of that. So let me give you an answer for that. We got a graphic here. A little info for you. When you hear Texas people start talking about who's the real UT, <laughs> the University of Tennessee was founded in 1794. The state of Texas entered the Union in 1845. Preach. The University of Tennessee is five decades older than the state of Texas. And the state of Texas is only a state of Texas because of a few Tennessee volunteers. That's how you got the nickname. To me, that whole real UT thing, just point out, our school's older than their state. End of story. <laughs> Done. All right. When we come back, let's take a look at each SEC team's most played rivals. Who have they played the most? And is that necessarily their biggest rival? I want to talk about this for all 16 teams. Who's the big rivalry? And it's interesting when you see who these teams have played, you're going to realize, well, how come they don't feel like they're in the, an SEC member yet? Well, it's because all their big games are in some of their conference. Come on back. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Daniel Hood Roofing. Just because you don't see a stain on your ceiling, that doesn't mean you don't have a leak in your roof. Water can seep through your shingles for weeks or months before you finally realize it and see a brown spot on your ceiling. Do yourself a favor, get a free inspection from Daniel Hood Roofing. And if they don't find anything, they're not going to do anything. If you find something, then you may have a chance to do something about it. And Daniel and his team have a good track record of getting your insurance company to pay for it. DanielHoodRoofing.com. Okay, let's quickly run through the SEC's most played games and also... I want to know the most hated rivalries here. So let's take a look at this. We're going to do it four schools at a time. And uh, here we go. All right. So what you see here, Alabama's most played rivals over there on the left. All right. So it's one through five. They're most played games. And it's not just in the SEC. This is their most played games, period. All of theirs happen to be in the SEC. They've played Mississippi State more than anybody. Tennessee, the second most. Then LSU. Then Auburn because they didn't play for years. Now at the bottom, and you guys can debate this with me. You can tell me if I'm wrong. In red, their big rival is Auburn, in my yeah. opinion. So I put the big rival in red. Yeah. Look at Arkansas. For years, they've said they didn't have a rivalry. And Texas A&M came in. That helped. They've played them most of all. Texas is big for them, though. That's their big rival. Yeah. So to get Texas back, I think, is huge. But look who they've played the most. Tulsa, SMU, TCU. Well, they're not in the yeah. SEC. So if you wonder why they feel like they're outsiders, that's why. Auburn... All right, they've played Georgia the most. It's the oldest rivalry in the Deep South. Mississippi State, Georgia Tech, formerly the SEC. They played them a lot. Alabama, Florida. Clearly, their big rivalry is Alabama. No, no, no yeah. debate here so far. Ryan, I'm going to let you debate this one for me, though. You tell me the answer. <laughs> Florida, they played Georgia more than anybody. Then Auburn, which they lost that rep. They've still got Auburn that they've played second most, and they, they haven't played them every year annually since the 92. So that tells you how often they played them. Kentucky. LSU, Florida State, and Florida State didn't start playing football until, what, the 50s, 40s, 50s? Hmm. So that's why that's not higher. Who's their big rivalry, though? Is it Georgia or is it Florida State? Is I, it in-state hate or is it the cross-border Georgia thing? This is a tough one. I, I go I, – Georgia has become more important because that's what stands in the way of their SEC championship hopes every year, but I think it's probably Florida State because of just the in-state hatred. They butt heads in recruiting all the time. Uh, it'd be hard to top that one. Like you said, just not as long of a history, but recent history is really good for that one. Georgia, Florida State, who's your big rival? I think it's Georgia. They play it in Jacksonville, and, and because it's an SEC game and because sometimes the SEC the divisional title, which is no longer the divisional title is on the line, I would go Georgia. I want to hear from some Florida people. I wonder – I hope I get an email or two yeah. from Florida people because I want to know if you had to choose – you want in-state bragging rights against Florida State, or do you want that SEC win over Georgia? Uh, where do you think it's Florida State or Georgia? Florida State. Okay. Somebody used to room in college, right after college, with a Florida fan, and they knew how important Georgia was. First time I brought a girl home, Florida State fan, get her out of the house. And it, and it wasn't just like a bitter thing. He was spitting venom. Florida, Florida State. It's just one instance. I believe, though, it's the Gators and the Knowles. Did you get her out of the house? Yeah, and there wasn't a second thing coincidence. He's, he's got his priorities <laughs> off. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Georgia for a couple of reasons. One is the SEC, the importance that that game did have when they were both good in the SEC. And because Ryan said Florida State, I'm still mad at him by Auburn. <laughs> 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 so I'm gonna go Georgia. I, I, I'm gonna I can go, tell he's gonna hold that answer. I'm gonna go Florida State. I just think yeah. that in-state stuff is pretty big. But we'll see. That's why I'm asking the questions. All right. Who are the rivals for the next four schools? Let's take a look. Georgia, who have they played the most? Auburn. Okay. 
Then you got Georgia Tech, clean, Georgia Tech, clean old fashioned hate as it's known. Then you've got Florida. Then their fourth most played game is Vanderbilt. Then Kentucky. But I got three possibilities there for you. Who's their biggest rival? If they could only have one win, is it Auburn? Is it Florida? Or is it Ooh. beating the devil out of Georgia Tech? Auburn. History tells you everything. See, go back in my day, it would have been Georgia Tech. I mean, that, that historically, I think, is who it was. But Georgia Tech's fallen off so bad in the last 40 yep. years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with Florida. I agree. I think it's Florida. I think the last More than Auburn? the last twenty years well, have changed the same it. Division. Yeah, they're in the same division. And it, Not anymore. So for the the modern fans, the younger fans, it's probably yeah. Florida. So I, I would lean Florida right now. Uh, me too, for the same reasons. SEC title or East division could be on the line, and they have a they have a name for their rivalry game, which not everybody has. See, I just, uh, well, that's true, but they keep changing it. It's not the cocktail <laughs> yeah. party anymore. But you have clean, old-fashioned hate for Georgia Tech. They got two mm -hmm. of them. And the oldest rival in the deep. They got names for all three of them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That one's interesting to me. Uh, I think we, because we're outsiders, not in it, I think we tend to look at it with logic. Yeah. And I don't know that logic really applies as much as just old time. Well, I think hate, you also but, tend yeah. to look at it as which one is the bigger television game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. And Georgia, Georgia Tech last year got good ratings. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look back at that list. Here's Kentucky. Their number one most played game is Tennessee. Number two is Vandy. Number three is Georgia, Florida, LSU. I don't have L I don't have Louisville on there because they didn't play for a long time. Those two teams don't like each other. Obviously, they play each other every year now. Tennessee's bigger rival than Louisville, isn't it? Yes. For Kentucky, I think it is. They'd rather beat. Tennessee yeah. than beat Louisville. Because it think. and it means more it's an SEC game. But yeah, it, it's Tennessee, but it's closer than it probably used to be. I think but the fact they play every year now, it's yeah. a big big game for them. I think the fact that they've beaten Louisville a lot more than they've beaten Tennessee mm -hmm. makes yeah. Tennessee the one yeah. you hate more. Mm -hmm. So okay, so we got Tennessee there. LSU, Jimmy, I want to lean on you this one, uh, you for this one. They've played Mississippi State more than anyone. Historically speaking, I would argue Ole Miss is their their historical number one rival. Mm -hmm. Tulane, who they should still be playing, but they don't is next, then Alabama, then Florida. Alabama, a huge TV draw every year. Is it Ole Miss or is it Alabama? I think it has become Alabama. Kind of like we were talking earlier with, LA, uh, with Tennessee, Auburn, Tennessee, Florida. I think it has become Alabama uh, because they had a lot of lean years at Ole Miss. Now, when I was growing up, it was more toward Ole Miss because they were fighting it out, not for just for the SEC, they were national championship contenders. Was in the late a, 50s, early 60s. It was traditional, like a Halloween game, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. That's when Billy Cannon made his punt yeah. return on Halloween. So, But I think that has changed. So I'm going to go LSU-Alabama, uh, which uh, would uh, oversee the uh, Ole Miss. I, I yield to Jimmy. We all agree with that. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're not, the, uh, you, you'll only argue no, with Bob. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> okay. Uh, if Auburn's involved, he will. <laughs> let's take a look at the last one here. Mississippi State. All right, this, look, it's going to be Ole Miss. But yeah. LSU, they've played. Alabama and Mississippi State are right next to each other. That's a, that's, those are closely related schools right there. Mm -hmm. Auburn and then Tulane. You see Tulane is on there with LSU. Tulane's on there with Mississippi State. And I got a hint for you, Tulane's going to be there with Ole Miss too. Uh, can we get Tulane in and boot Vanderbilt? <laughs> that, that, I would rather have that so at least be going to New Orleans once a year. But we all agree Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. Very good. Then let's catch a break, and when we come back, we're going to look at the rest of these, including Tennessee's. We'll show you who their five most played teams are. I think you're going to be surprised. I think Ryan's going to be surprised. <laughs> come on back. <laughs> Welcome back into the Sports Source, the segment brought to you by Safety Systems. Safety Systems does home automation. They do security systems. They do fire and life safety systems. This week, actually last week, I was running around town and I had to go into several different businesses and every single business I went into, they had that logo right there. It's a white sticker with the safety systems logo on it right in the doorway, everywhere I went. Why? Because if you want a security system in East Tennessee, you call VFL JJ Surlis and the team at Safety Systems. They've been doing it for a couple of decades now. They do it great. I've used them. If you drive by my house, you'll see their signs on my yard because I believe in this company. They're really good. Safety systems. All right. Let's continue our rivalry check right here. Now, look, look at Missouri, all right? <laughs> Their top four most played games, <laughs> Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa State, Kansas State, and now they got Oklahoma in the league. And what's funny is i got a buddy who went to Missouri, and I asked him about it, and he said, I'm not excited about that. We left to get away from Oklahoma. So you do have one team coming back, but it's not who you play. Look, they reference Kansas in their fight song. Mm. Kansas is their rival. Yes. Yep. Agreed. Can uh -huh. the answer be none of the above? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it'd be Kansas. It's yeah. Kansas going all the way back to their if, the border war of the Civil War. Yeah. If there's a second, it might be Illinois, and they're not even a, yeah. not even on that not list. On list. Uh, next, you've got Oklahoma. Texas is their most played rivalry. And then you got Oklahoma State, Kansas, Kansas State, and then Missouri. Um, is it Texas or Oklahoma State? I think it's Texas, but boy, again, that in-state stuff yeah. gets hot. Let's remind everybody yeah. Mike Gundy didn't want to continue this rivalry because he's scared. But, but that's it's what they Texas. all do. Right, somebody it. leaves, they all do it. It's, yeah. te- I, it's pathetic. I, I hear you. You're right, you're right. I think the hatred meter is higher for Oklahoma State than it Texas. It might be. Bedlam is so, that cosign. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, they mm-hmm. love boiling. Texas. Texas is bigger nationally, yeah. and yeah. but you covered that conference. You up, so you think it's Oklahoma State? I the fan base would tell you, much like Florida, Florida State. Yep. they tell you the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Iowa, Iowa State. That kind of splits these there in state. Absolutely. You've been there, mm-hmm. and I'll yield to you. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We got Ole Miss. We mentioned them. Mississippi State's their most played game, of course, the Egg Bowl. Then you got LSU. Then you got Vanderbilt is the third most played game there. And, and that's one that everybody was like, Vanderbilt and Ole Miss, who cares? Well, they care because <laughs> they yeah. played 100 times. Then you got Tulane and Alabama. All right, Ole Miss, I've got Mississippi State or LSU. It's Mississippi State. I yeah. mean, traditionally, yeah. Yeah. it's LSU. But I would think traditionally in terms of if you're trying, if they were good and they're competing in the top ten, it's LSU. But I think year in, year out, hate, it's Mississippi State. Here's the, here's the tiebreaker. Ole Miss and Mississippi State have gotten in more fights on the field yes. than Ole Miss Mississippi State. It's, it's Ole Miss Mississippi State. It's a good tiebreaker. It's Ole Miss Mississippi State, and I, it's sneaky good rivalry. It's, a, I think, top five, top ten nationally. It's, it always it's gets good there. national yes. views, yeah. too. It gets good ratings. Thanksgiving I night. Thanksgiving yep. night. That's where I'm at for yep. that game. I shouldn't have put LSU on there, so let's go. That was a typo <laughs> on my part. Uh, next, South Carolina. All right, their most played rival is Clemson, obviously. Mm. Their second most played game is Georgia. And they're in the conference, and yet yeah. that's a game they're going to lose. If you if, the, if you look at the breakout, the way they're breaking it out, Georgia and South Carolina would not continue as rivals, which I think is stupid. Do do South Carolina solid, given their one rivalry. Then they got North Carolina, NC State, and Wake Forest. But their big rival, there's no question, it's Clemson. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yes. Okay, let's yep. move on. Let's get into the uh, Tennessee section of our game. All right, so Tennessee's most played rivals: Kentucky number one, Vandy number two, Alabama number three. And looky yonder, <laughs> two teams who you haven't played annually in 30 years, but they're still your most played. Yep. You still have Ole Miss and Auburn ahead of Florida and Georgia. Again, to me, those are rivals, and they would ignite immediately yes. if you brought them back, especially Agreed. with Bruce Pearl at basketball, with Lane Kiffin in football. Yeah. Ah, well, we're old, Bob. We don't, get yeah. what, we don't get what we want. But here's the thing. Tennessee's got four possible games there. What's their biggest football rival? Is it Alabama? There's a young crew, I would say Alabama, there's a young crew that says it's Florida. You could also make the case that it's Kentucky, that's your most played, that's a border rival. You had a trophy at that one. And then there are some people who consider Vandy a rival. I am not one of them. It's, it's Alabama. The, the, young, the younger generation, I know some th- sometimes think it's Florida, but yeah. it's, it's Alabama. And Florida's, Florida's recent fall has only underscored that. That game was only important because of the importance in the SEC East. Alabama's the, got the history. They smoke cigars after the game. I mean, what more do you mm-hmm. need to say? There you go. Yeah, I go with Alabama as well. <laughs> the, comes the my birthday, time. Christmas Eve, Spurrier spiking his visor on the sideline. Even if Tennessee was down for, 30. For, I, that rarely happened. Yeah, it, <laughs> hey, but this guy got really excited. It's Florida to me. It'll for, always be Florida. For 10 years, it was I'll awesome. I lean closer to Florida than, than Jimmy and, and Ryan. No, I think it's I'm a close go call. Alabama. It, it, but I, I think Florida, in the, in the past 20 years, has surpassed Alabama to an extent. Uh, now, I, I mean, you know, you beat Alabama here two years ago, and it was, you know, the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. It was huge and everything. But I, I, I think it's, I think it's close. But I'm going to go Alabama, but I think Florida is very, very close. You're just trying to appeal to the youth vote. Exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to get on Ryan's good side. There's something about I'll coaches that, that bump know. their gums, man. There's something about we, coach, even Muschamp. That 10-9 to 9 game, all oh, these Tennessee – something about them coaches bumping gums. They, yeah. Florida <laughs> anyway, Swagger is that. Do, do you remember them chanting <laughs> F. Muschamp from the, the F. Florida? I was covering an Iowa Penn State game Yeah, I don't remember that. that. I was yeah. gonna, how dare he speak to us <laughs> that way? It's like, <laughs> you F-bombed his team. What do you expect? <laughs> I will say, I think we're about to enter a really good era for the Tennessee-Alabama series. I think it's going to be really competitive for yeah. the next five to seven years. Which says a lot about what Josh Heupel's done yeah. here, and it also yeah. says that – 
Kalen DeBoer is not going to be Alabama. Well, I think he's going to be good, <laughs> but, but he's not, uh, not number one in the country. Let's take a look. Let's move through the rest of these. All right, Texas, they got Oklahoma's the number one most played, then Texas A&M. I didn't look to see how close that is, if the last 10 years of not playing changed that. Yeah. But then they've got Baylor, Rice, and TCU. Mm. Who's their hottest rival? If, if they only go to one rival each in the SEC, it's going to be Texas, Oklahoma, and Texas A&M stays with LSU if it remains an eight-game schedule as it is right now. So that would tell you it'd be Texas, Oklahoma, rather than Texas, Texas A&M. Boy, it's hard for me to think they don't hate A&M more than they yeah. hate Oklahoma. Uh, I think they hate A&M more than, than Oklahoma. Yeah, I think there's more respect with Oklahoma. I think there's hatred toward the Aggies. Texas, Texas, Oklahoma became more important nationally because they were both good. But Texas, I, I lean in state. If it's a tie, I think Texas and A and M hate each other. Agreed. With a family that is split, A and M in Knoxville, College Station in Knoxville, my relatives would tell you, anything that's close to that orange, we don't like you, but we hate Texas a little bit more. I'm gonna throw all right, uh, Slippery Rock. <laughs> And Holy Cross. <laughs> I had a buddy who went to college at Holy Cross. He hated Slippery Rock. You, I don't, got, you got contact everywhere. It doesn't spread that often, right. but it's close. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bob, were you going to say something right now? Uh, I, I'm just going to say it's probably Texas A&M okay. and make a comeback. And All I right. won't use the example I used on the radio there. The day is Yeah, let's on. not. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> let's go on. Uh, Texas A&M, it's the same thing. They hate Texas. <laughs> yeah. but they've got Baylor, TCU, Rice, and SMU there. And then you got Vanderbilt. Who cares? <laughs> Tennessee, Ole Miss, Kentucky, Alabama, Coastline. Georgia, they're most played, but they hate Tennessee the most. So It's Tennessee. Look, who cares? it's a very one-sided rivalry. They hate Tennessee a lot. I grew up in Middle Tennessee. It's, it's very it, a lot of vitriol on that side, but Tennessee doesn't uh, return it really. I think it's Innsworth High School. <laughs> I think what's fascinating to me is Kentucky to me seems like more of a fairly matched rivalry. Yeah. And yet they can't beat you even when you're good. Vanderbilt won a, went on a run where they beat you seven times in a 15-year span, and Tennessee fans still don't respect Vanderbilt. It didn't matter. It's like, well, we, it was us. You know, it was more of, it's stupid Butch Jones. It wasn't. Nobody hated Vanderbilt for it. You hated Butch Jones. You hated Derek Dooley. It was more of, how did we lose to those idiots? If, Not how did they beat us. It's how did we lose to them? James Franklin had stayed there for 10 or 15 years, it would have been a lot of fun. Maybe. I know it's recent history, but Vanderbilt fans always could hang their hat on well, as long as we have baseball, you'll never be able to touch us there. <laughs> well, something just now, happened. Now it's bowling. Bowling is their big sport. <laughs> yes. Bowling. That's and I'm sorry, one. anchor down. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, no. No, doesn't work. When we come back, if UT had to pick three schools to play every year as permanent in football and basketball, who are their biggest multi-sport rivals? We've been thinking football. All right, who are their biggest multi-sport rivals? Who would they pick if you had to pick three teams to play in both sports every year. Come on back. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment of our show brought to you by Games and Things. If you're looking to create a home theater room for your family, start right there at Games and Things with their home theater seats. Huge selection. If you're wanting to create a game room for your family, start at Games and Things. Just a massive allotment of table games, big and small, games you hang on the wall. They got it all. Life should be fun. Make it so. By visiting Games and Things this week, corner Kingston Pike at Lovell Road. All right. If Tennessee had to pick, you know, we were talking about, we've looked at some of these rivals. Mississippi, Mississippi State, they hate each other in every sport. Alabama, Auburn, they hate each other in every sport. We talk about Tennessee, you don't think Kentucky's a rival in football. No, they are in basketball. Exactly. It is the no, rival in yes, basketball. Big, big rival. I don't know that you have a – now, I consider Kentucky a football rival, too. Not a great rivalry, but I consider that a rival. So I think that is your closest to a two-sport rival in my book. I think during the Bruce Pearl years and when f football was pretty good, Florida kind of climbed up into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vanderbilt, nah. If you had to pick three schools, if Tennessee got the same annual foes in football and basketball every year, who would you pick? Is Kentucky on that list for football and basketball? Yes. It is for me. Yes, they would be it for me. It is for me. Too. All right, then that leaves us Alabama, Florida, Vanderbilt? No, or Bandy. Bandy's in the discussion. It depends. Are, we, are we allowing for the no. fact that everybody's got to have three or just the best three for Tennessee and nothing else matters? Yeah, don't worry about that. If we yeah. get into, well, Vandy right. would really get yeah. no, no, no. Because Vandy's got to have somebody. But if we're not only worrying about what yeah. Tennessee wants, I wouldn't have Vandy on the list. I think they, Tennessee fans would say Florida probably before Vanderbilt. Yeah, so. and Alabama. And Alabama is the other yeah. one for me. In alphabetical order. Alabama, Florida, Kentucky. Yep. Alabama, I mean, Florida. I've got one different from you. Okay. Auburn. Because I, 
I think that if you renew that rivalry, in it football. would be special. Would be and football. in basketball, and yeah. you got Bruce Pearl. I don't think Auburn's ever been a rivalry. Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, yes, they have. Sure haven't. Who would, who I would, didn't say that. <laughs> who would you? Uh, who would you bump? Florida. Florida. Okay, so you would have and I, Alabama, I, Kentucky, I and Auburn. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can live with that. Alabama, Auburn, and if, uh, Kentucky. I could, yeah, yeah, I could, I could do road. Florida or Auburn, either one. Yeah, I could go yeah. there. If we're open to sort of manufacturing an old rivalry and making it one again, I'd be all for that. I think that's a great one. Uh, what you if got you, me there, too. Yeah. What if I took one of those out and put Texas in there? You played Texas every year. I can live with that. I, I, I think you could uh, I consider Texas. Yeah, because of that, I think it'd be a great rivalry in football, and you got the Rick Barnes angle in basketball. I think it'd be a tremendous yeah. rivalry. Yeah, I think yeah. that one would work. It's number nope, four. I could, I could live with that one, too. Is there anybody else we're missing? I, I like playing Georgia. I mean, I look forward to Georgia games. You certainly yeah. recruit there. And, and, and so Georgia's higher on my list than it probably is with somebody. I could replace Kentucky with Georgia. I love the basketball angle to it. You've got to play Kentucky but in basketball. But you've got to play Kentucky in basketball. Yeah. So right. that, would be the, that would be what would stop yeah. me from doing that. But Georgia's higher on my list and it would be more in the conversation. If Mike White can get that program and hoops up just a little bit more, and I thought they were heading that direction with Anthony Edwards, and, of course, Tom Crean was there. But, I mean, if Georgia could just get on that escalator, maybe. But I'm not there yet because of hoops and their struggles. All right, answer me this one. All right, so biggest rivalry overall. Tennessee, Alabama, Florida? I mean, Tennessee, Alabama football? Or Tennessee, Kentucky basketball? Well, it's going to be football because football is bigger. Yeah, but is, at some point you wouldn't – but I wouldn't say every football game is bigger than – So, I'm, so and, Alabama, and so Tennessee. I think, I think Kentucky, Kentucky basketball is awfully close. To me, those are that's, – yeah. yeah. that's one yeah. and two. Then I would get into Tennessee, <sighs> yeah. Florida, or Tennessee, Auburn, or something else. But it's Alabama football, mm. it's Kentucky basketball would be my top two. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would, I would probably go in that order still because I think Tennessee, Alabama, for so many people, is just synonymous with mid-October, yeah, fall, right. Saturday. I, I mean, still have that Florida mm -hmm. football right there very, very okay. – with, with Kentucky basketball. If you went the last 30 close. years, it's football. It's Florida in football. Yeah. Last 30 years. If you mm -hmm. go the last yeah. 70 or 80 years, it's Alabama in football. Yeah. And being that I'm closer to 70 or 80, <laughs> that's where I would go. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, when we come back, let's take a look at the SEC's new map because it is stretching in a new direction. <laughs> let's take a look at that map and discuss whether or not Greg Sankey says they're not moving the SEC championship game. It is Atlanta. It doesn't look real fair to about three quarters of the conference. Should they move the SEC title game? If so, where? Come on back on the sports. Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment is brought to you by Pipe Wrench. You see right there, drain cleaning, plumbing, heating, cooling. Man, the heat is on this summer. And if heaven forbid your AC goes out, call Pipe Wrench. Not only do they handle the aforementioned plumbing and drain cleaning, but they are top ranked in town for HVAC fixes as well and just HVAC purposes. If you know yours is on its last leg, why don't you take care of that thing and replace it before it conks out on you and leaves you sweating one night. Find out why so many people give these guys great reviews. Visit PipeWrench.com today. All right, take a look here at the new SEC map. I didn't put the city names, but you can see the red dots, and they're all over the place now. And, boy, they spread out for the Southeastern Conference. You got Northwest, <laughs> West, and then Southwest there thrown in there. Uh, it has shifted. And then you have, in very small print, for my guys here, I'm going to point out what we got. Atlanta is marked in blue. Then you got New Orleans down there, which I'm always for putting games in New Orleans. Nashville, but the real center of this map is Memphis. If, if the Titans had wound up in Memphis instead of Nashville and they had a big new NFL yep. stadium, I think Memphis would be the place to play this thing. But since they don't have the facilities for it, I don't think you move it. My question is, Greg Sankey is talking about not moving it. I think eventually... They're going to, you know, it's going to be about money, and they will be able to bid this thing out. I, think they, I don't think they're going to bid it to San Francisco or something, but I do think <laughs> they would bid it to these southern cities. I could see it going to that new Titans stadium. I could see it getting out of Alabama and going to New Orleans or Houston one year. Maybe you play it all the way out in Dallas. But do you guys, first of all, tell me this, do you think they ought to move it? Because if this is Texas versus Georgia in an SEC championship game and it's in Atlanta – or even if it's Texas versus Tennessee, 
it's a pretty big home field advantage for the eastern part of this league to do that. Should they move it or no? Yes. If you I, want to play fair, even slice yeah, of pie. I'd yes. like a rotating basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, well, first think, question yeah. is. Yes, yeah. you would move it yes. if, if it rotates. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would. And I don't think the setup in Atlanta is so superior that it can never be moved. It's a good mm -hmm. venue, but not such an amazing setup that you just have to keep it there. Like Nashville for basketball, which I think should probably stay there. To the point you just made quickly. Big 12 title game was in Kansas City for so many years. All of a sudden, what do they do? Move it to Arlington, tractable roof. Same thing with Chicago with the Big Ten. What do they do? Lucas Oil Stadium, retractable roof. John, I think you're on to something. They're going to move this thing to Nashville. Yeah, they'll, they'll wind up moving it around. Especially with the I Titans' think. new stadium. So, with the Yeah. Bob, should they move it? No. Okay, you're just being a contrarian, but play your contrarian <laughs> game. No, I, I like it. I like it being in Atlanta, and I and I don't think the travel thing. You know, okay, Georgia's playing Alabama. You don't have a big advantage. I mean, Alabama's going to show up. Georgia's going to. I think if Texas is there and they're playing Georgia for an SEC championship in Atlanta, you're going to have as many Texans as you are Georgians. Would Tennessee fans cry? If they had to play Texas in Houston, oh well, sure they would. Okay, there oh. you go. So yeah. and well, whoever would cry. But I mean, here's the but thing. But you don't care. Yeah, well, no. Just, <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I just have, but they, have they some all. tradition for something, and that game's been in Atlanta a long time. Well, will this matter as much with a 12-team playoff and a 14-team mm -hmm. playoff? Though I'm not sure anybody's going to care as much about the SEC title game. I wish they would, but I think it's going to be diminished a bit. Now it's just a money thing. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. not really a. All that important. Can I give you a prediction? Yeah. And the reason why I bring it up is because it was a, such a big storyline down in Hoover for SEC baseball. They're contractedly obligated to Hoover, Alabama for just one more year. That's why they're trying to pump so much money into the Hoover mat and try to yeah. facilitate. I think when we're going to see the big reveal of it moved, I don't care how much money gets dumped into that stadium. I personally believe the SEC baseball tournament after the contract's up is going to get moved to the Nashville Minor League Baseball Stadium because it fits everything that they're looking for for hotels, and I think there we'll slowly start seeing that transition. Well, look, Nashville has become uh, – it's, kind of, it's, it's now up there. Las Vegas and New Orleans used to be your party cities yeah. in this country, and now Nashville is in that, in that group. <laughs> uh, and they've got more modern facilities. I think, I think New Orleans infrastructure is better. Yeah. They know what to do. They've done Super Bowls. They're doing better than anybody. Mm -hmm. But Nashville's infrastructure is getting pretty darn good. Uh, my question is, if you rotate these, what's your rotation? Atlanta, Nashville, I would keep New Orleans, New Orleans. in there. And then I would look at, if I'm looking at Houston to throw them a bone, or Texas mm. to throw them a bone, yeah. I go Houston because that's closer as opposed to two. Dallas. That's I'd, me. Go, yeah. I'd go Houston and Dallas and do that every other time. I wouldn't put two out of every five in Texas. I'd do one every four in Texas. And yeah. one time Dallas, the next time it's Houston. Something oh, I like see that. what you're saying. Yeah. I like to keep it at three, the New Orleans, Atlanta, Nashville. If you do throw Texas a bone, Dallas is essentially Big 12 country. Houston, make it SEC country. Yeah. I will say this about the Nashville Stadium. It's going to be way smaller than the others. I think that's a consideration. They can't sell as many tickets in Nashville. That's, that's Titan, Titan Stadium holds like 60,000. That's, that's something to think about. Atlanta holds about 20,000 more. Well, that's true. That's a good point. And, of course, Dallas holds a billion people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, would you move the basketball tournaments too? I, I don't have a problem if you put all these in like a three-year – I could see basketball rotating more often than football. I like but, Nashville as the hub, but we've already talked about this in, in between breaks. They already played one in St. Louis to throw Missouri about. They're going to put one in Oklahoma City at some point. They're going to put the, one in Houston at some point, I bet. The Nashville setup is great, and you need to play to that Kentucky fan base all you can because they sell out every single yeah, year. Okay, yeah, Bridgestone does such a great job with that. I don't know why yeah. you touch it, but I get it. Okay. So you would rotate football but not basketball? Yeah, that's what I would do. What about you, Jim? I would keep it in Nashville. Yeah. I also mm -hmm. think baseball is going to stay in Hoover. Okay. A lot of history I don't think there. it's going to move. Yeah. Well, here's another interesting thing. If you look at that map, you know, if you had a good stadium, Memphis is kind of centered. Yeah. Birmingham would be more centered than Atlanta. Of course, mm -hmm. that's where the first two championship games were played. Mm -hmm. And then another one that would be up there uh, would be like Jackson, Mississippi, which you joked about earlier. <laughs> if you had a good stadium there in Jackson, you could do it there too. But anyway, there's your map one last time to take a look at it. It'll be interesting to see what the SEC does. My guess is they now, because of players getting paid, they now have the freedom to say, we need a revenue stream, yeah, and they're going to say it about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that is my guess. Jimmy Himes, thank you for being here. Ryan Callahan, on behalf of everyone but Bob, thank you for being here. <laughs> Tyler Ivins, thank you. Bob Hodge, thank you. Thanks to our crew. Uh, did a great job today. We appreciate it. Thanks to our sponsors for bringing you this show every single week. And thanks to you for watching. There is no show year-round for 20-plus years, if not for you. 
Thank you, and we'll see you next Sunday right back here on The Sports Source.